So multiculturalism, what is it and does it work? That is an absolutely loaded question. The politically correct answer is to say that yes, multiculturalism works. But once you define it, you realize that what you think multiculturalism is and what they actually mean by multiculturalism are two different things. So I was taught that your beliefs create your values. Your values, in turn, create the culture at large. So culture is an aggregate of your beliefs and values. Let's do a thought experiment. A business that has a company culture of hard work, innovation, and craftsmanship. That's the culture. Those are the things they value. What happens if you have a multicultural company? Well, you have a small group of people who believe in quality, craftsmanship, and hard work, and maybe one uh, group in the company believes in um, just punching the clock, shoddy work's fine, it's not a big deal, their values are hanging out, having fun. Uh, their values are taking as much time off as you can. And innovation is somebody else's job. We'll just copy the next thing. Okay, that's another group. And then another group's overarching value at work is lunch. They think that lunch needs to be as good as possible. That makes up an, another group. And what, what you get when you see a company that has its values fractured like that is that the overall company begins to get dysfunctional and the vision that stems from the culture begins to get obscure. So when companies say that they promote multiculturalism or even diversity, that's not actually what they're promoting. They want uh, unity in culture, unity in values, unity in belief. Uh, but then they want um, people with different ethnicities there, right? So that's that's all they mean when most companies mean they they believe in multiculturalism. They don't actually believe in practical multiculturalism. They believe in just different. Um, I like to call them flavors of people. I don't I don't like race. Uh, I I tend to believe the biblical view that we're all descendants of Adam and Eve, and so makes it really difficult to 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 call people different races, even though I, I use that word from time to time. I don't like it. Um, despite that, we're all got children, so, you know, get over it even if you don't like it. But um, when when we talk about multiculturalism in a, in a business, it's a disaster. So, you, for example, one of the best things to, way to, best ways to describe this is... Um, what happened at the New York Times? All right, it's fantastic. So Tom Cotton writes a piece saying that when people riot as bad as they've been rioting, we need to bring in the National Guard. Um, that way, like, everybody can have peaceful protests without having to worry about, you know, things getting burned down, right? First Amendment, you have the right for peaceful assembly. Uh, New York Times ran that, and the guy who, who ran that, the editor, got fired or had to leave, got pushed out. He got pushed out because his views, his values, the value of free speech was not shared with the majority of the, um, the people on, on the, in the company's board. Their values were different. Um, and so what that meant was that the culture of the New York Times was changing, and it was changing in the favor of censoring free speech. So no free speech, right? Um, this is where you see the, the culture clash, the clash between the, the two groups. Of On the one hand, you have, um, you have the value of free speech, and on the other hand, you have the value of censored speech. Um, so that, that's a good example. One person believed in it. They believe in free speech. They have that value. Therefore, the, the, if the company reflected that, the paper would look different. 
so, and you can watch this if you're any, any objective and you can see like the New York times, how it has shifted from being a, um, like the, all the news worth printing to something completely different. And I'm not, I'm not necessarily judging them. They've got a right to, to be whatever they want to as well. That's fine. It's like Fox news. So they were actually fairly balanced, you know, a few years ago. Now they're losing their balance. I consider Fox news like a right center now, uh, in the country. Um, but they're moving, their values are moving. Uh, when, when the, the older man, um, Bill something, when he, when he got, when he had to leave and they, they, Fox news moved to the left and then the owner, when he died, it moved further to the left. So they're, they're kind of going back and forth now trying to figure out if they want to be, um, a, a, uh, objective news source or if they want to be a right-wing news source. Um, so I, I think, um, might be NBC struggles with this too. I think it's NBC. One of them is is um, the most center of most news sources are left wing. One of them's closer to center than the rest, and they kind of struggle with objective or not. Um, it's all you're seeing is a reflection of their values. So when you see someone walking down the street and you start interacting with them, you start picking up on their beliefs, their values, their culture from everything from what they wear to how they speak how they carry themselves, what they drive, where they live. It's all expressions of their culture because it's showing a reflection of their values. And their values are a reflection of what they believe. So um, when you start uh, digging and you start saying, okay, do I want to create a multicultural group? What do you mean by that? Do you mean all ethnicities? I think that's a fantastic um, thing. Bring them all in. You know, Everybody's fantastic. But when you start setting out to accomplish something, there has to be a, a unanimity or as close to a unanimity of purpose as possible. And that will begin to change people's expressed culture, expressed values. Uh, and I think that is a fantastic thing. I enjoy the version of like the United States when we have one culture, the American culture. And that means that if you know we pick up bits and the best of all the other cultures around the world, that's American culture. When we pick it up and we say, this is ours. I know that's considered cultural appropriation now, but I think that is the best way to be super inclusive is you need to culturally appropriate the best things globally. Uh, when you, If you're a business owner and you come in contact with a company who's outperforming you, you need to find out what they're doing differently and you need to apply that. That needs to become yours. That's how you become winners. That's how you become successful. Anytime I counsel young people, old people, people in between, if if they are not satisfied with their life and how it's going, I tell them to change their culture. And what that means is they have to go back and they have to look at their values. They have to figure out what they value compared to where they want to be. Find someone who you want to be like. See what they value. Then look at yourself and ask ask the question, what beliefs did they have that got them to those values, that got them to those that particular culture, to that success? Because it, it flows like that. If your culture becomes something that pushes you towards a certain goal, consciously and unconsciously, you are far more likely to have a stunning success. Because when you wake up in the morning, you're going to be propelled there. When you go to bed at night, your dreams are going to take you there. So make sure that you know what multiculturalism is. You know what you mean by it. Um, and make sure... That when people are saying, hey, we need a, a great multicultural this or that, ask, just to ask them to define it. Because once, once you define it, 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 makes, it makes a lot more sense. Most people don't mean multicultural. Most people think, uh, most people actually mean uh, different flavors of people. And that's great and that's commendable. I'm not knocking that at all. I've, it's the use of the word that kind of aggravates me. Um, just because I've learned that... Uh, I have been taught that culture is the aggregation of beliefs and values. And in order to have anything successful, you have to have the closest to the unanimity of beliefs and values as possible. 